Hi, today I'm going to take a look at this Color Computer 3 motherboard. I'm going to try to repair it. Uh, I've been working on a project for the last year or so, trying to put a Color Computer 3 board into an old IBM PC portable case. And uh, during that project, everything was going great, but I uh, did some modifications to the power supply, and I stupidly put a Molex connector on the end of the supply. Now, the problem with that is, is that the wiring here and the voltages are different than what are in the PC power supply. So when I plugged it in the PC power supply, not thinking, uh, I blew up the board. Now that would be bad, except I actually did that twice. This is my second Coco 3 board. I wired in uh, the Molex connector as it's supposed to be. Uh, then at midnight while I was tired, I plugged it into the PC power supply, not thinking, all excited, you know, that I'm going to test out my Coco 3, and uh, the magic smoke escaped from the CPU. So, major problems. I did some tracing on the board, and I uh, found several chips that needed to be replaced. So, what I decided to do was to socket everything I could, uh, buy the jelly bean parts off of uh, DigiKey, and then the other parts, the, the more custom parts I picked up off of eBay. So there's a lot of new old stock for some of these things. There's one chip, there is no new old stock. Uh, this is a very custom chip, that's a gimme chip. Um, if that's blown, the, the board's never gonna work again and you I really have to buy a new board, you know, or new cocoa basically and pull it apart, which I don't wanna do because this is my second. Uh, however, I've measured, you know, some of the main signals on this, the E clock, the Q clock, those are being generated fine off of the gimme. So it seems like this is actually um, working still, but when I power it up, I get a black screen. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to start by doing some analysis of the uh, circuit layout and see if I can figure out some idea of what the problem might be. And then I'm going to do some measurements and see if I can isolate what the issue is. And hopefully I'll be able to fix this guy. Let's see. So basically when I power this thing up, it goes to a messed up screen. So a bunch of noise on screen, nothing uh, visible, useful. Uh, so there's definitely a problem. So this is the schematic for the Coco 3. Uh, in the center we have the 6809. Here we've got the gimme chip. Here we've got the uh, ROM. This is the data buffer from the 6809. These are non-inverting buffers. Uh, and then the 374 is a, um, a flip-flop. So these are these chips are used for the uh, memory. Now down here we have the uh, RAM chips. So there's uh, the main RAM chips here, the four that are on the board. And this is your optional 512K board. We have a... Uh, a three to eight decoder. We have the PI, the keyboard PIA, and we have the secondary PIA, which handles the sound, handles serial, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the important things on this board that that we have are, are going to be associated, you know, probably with this chip here, with the 6809, with the gimme chip, uh, and connections around there. That's my guess, anyways. Um, the gimme has a. Uh, uh, composite video out and that composite video out goes up to here there is a possibility that one of these two transistors is dead I checked the composite video output and actually doesn't seem to be outputting anything good from the gimme chip so it could be um, the gimme chip itself or it could be the fact that the gimme chip has not been initialized properly or it could be, you know, maybe there's a, a short or something in this circuit here, which is causing this to just be, um, you know, uh, being pulled down low to ground. Probably what I want to do in order to analyze this is I'll tr test these transistors out, see what I get, um, see if they're good or not, and if they need to be replaced. Uh, then I'm going to take a look at the 6809 itself and take a look and see if it's if it's initializing correctly q3 and q2 form a buffer between the gimme and the output 
the gimme is a high impedance output and the composite output is set, is going into a 75 ohm monitor so there needs to be some sort of buffer circuit between them and that's accomplished with these two uh, transistors now i did a little math and i uh, i looked at uh, what the base voltages should be on both of these transistors and uh, this one should be 3.6 volts and this should be 3.3 volts. They're using a voltage divider on the front of the circuit and uh, so it should be pretty easy to uh, check that and just see if there's a sane voltage going into those two. So let's test the base voltage here. Let's see what we get on Q3. And I'm getting 3.12 volts which is a little bit low. A little bit low but it could be my calculations are off or, or you know, whatnot, but uh, it's probably within spec. Oh, it's dropping there. Let's take a look. Two point. Yeah, it's varying quite a bit. Actually, that's very interesting. Now, two volts, two, three volts. Quite a bit of variance there. It should be stable at three volts. Yeah, 3.14 volts now might be just my connection there. So uh, that's a little low. Should be 3.6, but. Uh, that I'll keep a note of that and that might be uh, a hint and I'm checking the base on Q2 and I get 2 volts now Q2 should be 3.3 volts so this is quite low uh, I don't know exactly why that is and there's another hint for me so maybe some issue is in there regarding the, the power supply uh, let's check my supply voltage uh, here's my supply voltage VCC on the 6809 yeah, it's 5 volts, pretty good 5 volts there. There might be an issue with power. I'll have to do a further investigation on that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, do the next set of tests on these transistors and just do a sanity check and see if they might be good or not. So to do this test, I'm going to use my trusty Octopus. Uh, I built this last night, actually. It only took a couple of hours, uh, you know, including putting the box together and everything. It's really just a couple of resistors in a network. Uh, the Octopus allows you to go through uh, voltage and current curves on components. So it allows you to test resistors, transistors, etc., etc. So it's a pretty handy little tester that can show you whether something's, you know, completely blown or not. The Octopus has X and Y outputs. It has a device under test lead, which I've put to a, you know, uh, BNC cable. And it has a signal input, which is running from my uh, signal generator. So... I'll just do a quick test using the Octopus on a uh, regular transistor and I'll show you what the characteristic curves look like. So here's a 2N222. Uh, connect uh, one lead to the base. Connect one lead to the... It's either the emitter or collector. Uh, I got those backwards. Let's go like this. So uh, this is my voltage here. As the voltage goes over uh, about 0.6 volts, it starts to conduct so you can see this is a standard diode signature that you should be seeing two of these with the transistor between the base the emitter and the base and the collector uh, here is the base and the collector and yeah same sort of signal so that's a good 2 and 222 transistor let's take a look on the board I'll test Q3 first and see what I get now make sure the power is off before you use this and I'm going to connect up to the base here I'm going to try to connect to the base. Connect to the base. There we go. And I will do the emitter. Emitter looks good. Collector. In there. In there. There we go. I saw it just for a second there. There's the collector. So it looks good. Um, the pattern was a little distorted. And, and it's going to be a bit distorted because it's in circuit. So other components in the circuit are going to interfere with um, that test pattern, but uh, it will give you a good indication. I mean, it should be not completely out to lunch. And then I'm going to test Q2, which is my final output transistor. This is going to wrap that around the base there if I can get it. I think I got it. Okay. And I'll just uh, test from the back side here. It's a bit easier. So there's my base. Uh, it's a short because I'm connected on both the front and the back to the same pin. My collector, and I get the hockey stick. And uh, emitter, I get the hockey stick as well. So I'm actually going to guess that these transistors are okay. I don't think there's a problem with this. 
so if there's no problem with the uh, output buffer circuitry, then the gimme chip is either you know fried and it's not outputting any uh, composite uh, signal, correct composite signal, or it is uh, not being initialized correctly. And this guy here, the CPU, is what's responsible for doing that initialization process. So the next step, I'm going to uh, take a look and see if this guy is initializing the gimme correctly. So when you power up the 6809, the first thing it does is it goes to the very top of memory and it looks for a vector. Uh, that's your reset vector. And then it uses that address that's in the very top of memory and it uses, uses whatever's in there as the first execution address of the, the processor. That address will be stored in the ROM actually. Essentially what happens is, is there is a ROM chip select here that, that turns on. The CPU looks for FFFE on the address lines. And then on the data bus, what will happen is this ROM chip is going to uh, print out an address. And that address is, uh, I believe, going to be uh, 8C1D. But uh, let's just check that really quickly and see what we get. I've got an emulator here running, uh, the mass emulator for the Coco. And... Uh, if we take a look, it's at 8C1B, and the first command is ORCC uh, uh, hex 50. Now, this command is actually to turn off interrupts. So that's the first thing the, the CPU does when it reboots, is, is it turns off the interrupts. It's loading A with uh, uh, hex A, and it stores it in FF90. And FF90 is actually the gimme chip. So this is setting up the gimme chip addresses um, initially, uh, the initial parameters for the gimme chip. So if I can take a look at what's happening in the real computer when I go through the reset phase, I should see that the, the computer reads FFFE, then it executes uh, the instruction at 8C1B. So it should ORCC, it should turn off, turn off the interrupts there. And um, then it should initialize the gimme chip. Now, if it's not doing that, if it's not initializing the gimme chip properly, then that could be a reason why the screen is not working. So I think what I'm going to do is I will take a look. I'll test these transistors, see what I get. Then I'm going to connect my logic analyzer up to the CPU. I'll connect up the 16 address lines and then I will connect up the data lines to the logic analyzer and I, I'll be able to um, uh, use the analyzer, the logic analyzer in order to watch the boot sequence as it happens and we'll see if we can determine you know whether this thing is actually booting I should be able to see if these connectors are connected properly I should be able to see um, I won't be able to see the memory but I'll be able to see the data come from the ROM chip onto the bus and be read by the CPU. Thanks a lot for joining me. Sorry to disappoint if uh, you were thinking I'd be able to fix this in one video. It looks like this is gonna take several for me to actually resolve. Uh, like I said, I've been working on it for a year. Uh, still lots of time to go.